Hello and welcome to Ticket Manager's All Access Interview Series, engaging leaders from across the sports marketing spectrum to identify and explore critical issues in the business of sports, entertainment, sponsorship, activation, ticketing, hospitality, and more. I'm your host, Jim Andrews. Joining me on this episode to discuss the role of new second screen fans and, and their impact on sales and marketing, as well as some of the differences between sports and entertainment properties, is Chad Johnson, Chief Content Officer and Senior Vice President of Sales and Service for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome, Chad, and thanks for joining us. Well, Jim, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Your title is is, is very interesting, kind of a, a dual role. You got a, got a lot of things on your plate, it sounds like. Can you just tell us a little bit about uh, uh, all of your responsibilities there at the Jaguars? Yeah, you're right. It, it has evolved over a number of years. When I was lucky enough to join the Jaguars in 2012, at the time I was with Legends, and I came on as a consultant uh, shortly after Shad Khan purchased the Jaguars in 2012. So at that time, we were just an NFL football club, and I was lucky enough to be leading the ticket sales efforts for Shad under his new leadership and Mark Lamping, our team president. But Shad is a visionary. Shad has grown our portfolio of businesses over a number of years. We now have a sister company, All Elite Wrestling. Uh, we own a foot, uh, soccer club, a football club, the Foam Football Club in London. And we now control and manage a 6,000 seat amphitheater that's attached to our stadium called Daly's Place Amphitheater. So as those businesses have evolved and come on board, uh, I was lucky enough to be able to lead those efforts. And so where the content piece comes in is I'm responsible for the booking and programming of all of our live music. And then making sure across the company of properties, we have some consistency in our content and messaging throughout the portfolio of companies. Sounds like you're a busy man. <laughs> a lot of fun, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I'm sure. And we'll, we'll definitely talk about uh, some of the, uh, the, the non-sports stuff here, too. I want to get into that. But I wanted to start off and um, you know, talk about one of the developments that, that we've been following. And, and that is, of course, the, the importance of digital content, digital experience. We saw it last year, obviously, emerge even you know, to, to a greater extent when we didn't have fans uh, in, in stadiums. You and I talked earlier, and, and you mentioned that there's a pretty significant difference between the audience that is consuming and interacting with your digital content versus your, your ticket buyers who, who are coming to the games. Can you, you talk a little bit about that? Tell us what, you, what you've learned about the, the, those different audiences. Yeah, and this, this started for us a little bit before COVID hit, and we knew that we were having to go through a transition, and then COVID really accelerated that for us as well. But at the Jaguars, we're, we're in our 26th season. So we're going through our first generation switch of fans. Those that were coming for the last 25 years are starting to fade through and, and you know back out of their season tickets and their children are coming up and becoming our newest wave of season tickets. So season ticket holders. So we started to see that evolution a while back and we're really engaging some of these digital and social channels. But with COVID coming on board, for us, preserving sponsor revenue, just like everyone else, was really important. And we launched our second screen experience called Jags at Home. Mm -hmm. And what we can see there with Jags at Home, the true data is very clear. The average age of our current Jaguar ticket buyers is 53 years old. The average age of the Jags at Home users is 43. So a 10-year average age gap. And in, in that world, that's pretty significant. Sure. But more importantly, even, is how engaged those users are. Those users are much more engaged as far as time on screen, number of questions answered. So we find that when they do get involved in these second screen experiences and digital and social experiences, they're much higher engaged than the older audiences that might be consuming that as well. So it's something now that we have to take action on it. How do we convert those into ticket buyers and fans and coming to the stadium? I'd really like to, to dig a little bit deeper into that. And and because uh, I know you've done some, taken some steps and in, in, in done a few things there to really do exactly what you were talking about. And, you know, for, for me, when I look at somebody in, in, in your role and I think, boy, that uh, bifurcation uh, of, of the audience, that's got to make a real difference to, to the marketing and, and, and the sales efforts of an organization like yours. And, and I imagine it's required quite a change in the way you communicate to, to, to this the newer group, the, the younger group. Yeah, we're all lucky enough that there's certain softwares and things that exist that can help with segmentation and some of that. But to, to truly make it actionable, we had to invest in some people. 
We had to invest in some people that can truly look at the different segments of the databases, understand behaviorally how they act, understand demographically how they look, and then start to create customized campaigns for those folks. So we've been working and investing in some software with a partnership we have uh, with a company out of India to try to create a marketing automation experience in the ticket world. And that's one, we're one industry that's a little bit behind some other industries like maybe a Netflix or an Amazon and to what the buying experience would be like for those customers. You know, so if, if you logged into jaguars.com to search for tickets and I logged into jaguars.com to search for tickets, we would have the exact same experience right now. What we're working on is something maybe a little more like the Netflix model. Whereas when you log into Netflix, what you will see and the information that will be fed to you is very different than the information that will be fed to me. And for us in the world of conversion, that's what's so important. When, when someone consumes our content, they look at a great video, they go to our website to maybe think about coming here live and experience it. If I can't have a, a seamless and personalized experience for them, I'm going to be a little bit lower on my conversion for those folks. So what we're working on now with our people is really customizing what they see and what they experience as they're going through our buying our buying process. Yeah, I mean that that's fascinating, and, and like uh, you and I talked about before, it just it, it means such a different approach for for everybody in, in, in the sales operation. You know, I think you you mentioned you know back back in the old days, you just you, you get that list of people and you just started calling them, right? <laughs> So, so what we're what we're going through now, real time, is really interesting. Is, you know, we we've gone fully cashless, like other venues have. We have a mobile payment solution, so I can I can now go look at what do people that use that mobile payment solution look like and behave like, and are they different than those that don't? We're piloting a couple menu board ordering processes where we can customize the experience, customize the upsell to the customer. And so I can see are their purchase behaviors in the stadium different and then layer that on who they are, what they look like, and maybe how they got their ticket. Did you purchase the ticket? Did your neighbor invite you for free and forward the ticket to you? Did you get it from the secondary market? And now I can layer all that information on top of that one customer so that I can understand how to communicate with them. So on each and every phone call I may make or one of our sales teammates may make, they will have all that information at their fingertips to be able to say, okay, I need to talk to Jim very differently than I need to talk to Chad. I would, I would love to uh, have you talk a little bit about um, just some of the different uh, challenges and, and opportunities that come about in terms of marketing sports stadium and NFL stadium versus pure entertainment venue. Yeah, I, I will tell you this. I was very wrong when we started. What, what I thought was going to happen and what actually happened was very different. When we launched the music business, I thought the audience would be a significantly higher crossover audience. So as we sit here today, Daly's Place Amphitheater has been open for three years. So I have three years of concert data for Daly's Place Amphitheater. We've handled a number of stadium shows uh, in the TIAA Bank field. And then we have the Jacksonville Jaguars football. Where we sit today, only 10% of those people that have bought a concert ticket have ever purchased a Jaguars ticket. I thought that number would be well north of 50. Really? Wow. And so what we've found is that the challenge is they're currently not buying Jaguar tickets, but they're buying live entertainment and they're coming on our property. The amphitheater is attached to the stadium. So we know they're comfortable with the drive here, the commute. We know they're comfortable coming on site. The opportunity is we now need to figure out how to convert them. And that's where some of the digital and social opportunities can, can lay into that. I can start maybe tying the content together. Maybe one of our players working with the artist and showing how our football players like the same music that these patrons like. And maybe there's a crossover there. Maybe it's understanding what their in-concert purchase habits are. What food and beverage are they buying? And serving them maybe free food and beverage offer for a Jags game if they come to the stadium because I know what they're consuming and trying to find that. So that was very interesting. And, and we hosted the Rolling Stones here last summer. And the first thing I thought was great, 
The average age of my season ticket base, as I told you, 53 years old, probably right in the Rolling Stones wheelhouse demographically. All I have to do is push this message out to the, to the Jaguars database and I'll sell out. Well, 6%. Jim, 6% of the Jaguars ticket holders bought a Rolling Stones ticket. Wow. So it tells you that people that consume live sports are very different than people that consume live entertainment and figuring out how to cross over on that. So that's a significant focus of, of ours moving forward to get the two audiences to start to mix. Yeah, I would imagine. And it, we, we talk about that as, you know, obviously the the challenges of having these different audiences, but I would imagine there's there's a there's an upside there too when when we talk about corporate partnerships because now you're you're delivering a lot of different potential customers, so you're kind of you're I, I'm imagining the, the pool of, of potential brand partners uh, gets bigger as you start to say, hey, we also have these these digital audiences uh, on the sports side. We've got you know, these music and entertainment folks who, where there's not a lot of overlap. So I, I imagine that opens up some, some doors for you in terms of partnerships. It, it does, especially in some of the lifestyle type of things that, that typically lend more to live music, to festival type experiences and things like that, um, that wouldn't typically be kind of an NFL type partner. So there are some, there are some introductions we've made where they might join as a partner on the music side, but once they come in and experience what's happening on the sports side, they see they can tie those things together. Uh, it obviously happens a lot with our beverage partners, whether it be you know distilled spirits, malt beverage, et cetera. There's a lot of crossover in some of those types of opportunities. So, you know, being a being a very diverse business in a small market like Jacksonville is really, really important to us. And, and that's why we, that's why we built Daly's place and built the amphitheater one for an additional revenue stream to help offset what a small market like Jacksonville can bring to the table as far as financial challenges, but two to open the door to new fans so that we can keep the Jaguars a thriving NFL team here in Jacksonville. Well, like I said, Chad, it's, it sounds like you've got a, a full plate, but it's, uh, it sounds like it's also a lot of excitement and a lot of things to, to look forward to the rest of, of 2021 and beyond. Well, there's also, too, as I mentioned, we have the Fulham Football Club in London, and there's also some things that we have learned from live sport in the UK and some of the things they do there and that they do, quite honestly, a little better than we do. And then there's some things that we do here that are very different than the UK. So we've been able to gain some of those experiences and partnerships. And actually, I mentioned our mobile payment solutions partner. They're based in London, a company called Tap It. And I formed our relationship with them through our sister club, Fulham, there. So there's definitely some ways that we can continue to learn, even from the global sports that we manage here. What would you say is uh, or, or one or two things that they do um maybe better than, than we do uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, the sports properties? Um, loyalty and access control is one thing that's very different there. Um, and, and so how, how fans enter the building, tracking and loyalty of what they do is very different there um, and very much better for the most part than what we do here in the States. Contactless payment, et cetera, they're ahead of where we have been. You know, COVID has helped accelerate that, but that's things that they've been doing for a long time tap and go, no longer, you know, not having to insert your card into a machine, not having to sign the point of sale system, even in just their general um, normal lifestyle. It's, it's very much different there. Yeah. However, the experience is much more about the sport itself. For instance, taking soccer or football, as they call it there, it's about the game. The fans are the game presentation. Right. right? They don't have the music and the scoreboards and the replays. The fans create their atmosphere which is very different here. It's about the overall experience. Food and beverage plays a big part in it where there it does not. And, and so there's just um, some just differences in the way that our fans consume the sport versus their fans, how they consume the sport. Well, Chad, this has been, been great. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this and, and look forward to, to staying in touch and, and seeing how things uh, develop for, for you and the operation down there. Uh, so just let me say again, thank you very, very much for joining us. Well, I'm glad, glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Jim. All right, Chad. And on behalf of everyone at Ticket Manager, thank all of you for watching. And please join us again for the next episode in our Ticket Manager All Access interview series.